Is it really possible that this under $100 airbrush actually became my most used and maybe my favorite airbrush I have in my studio? Um, yeah, let's let's get into reviewing this thing. This is a Badger or Thayer and Chandler Omni 4000, and I have been using the daylights out of this. Let's find out more about it. So some of you may have noticed that I have started working on a list and I composed a list of nine airbrushes that you can find for under $100 from Quality Brands. This is one of the ones that I listed. I had used this airbrush before, but then I was curious. I was like, it'd been a long time since I'd seen one and I, I really got curious about it. So I went ahead and ordered one and bought myself one and got it in the studio. And I have been using it extensively, including the picture that I'm going to post up was done entirely with this airbrush. So when you get it, it's going to come in this box and there'll be a little bit of paper, a little airbrush instructions. Uh, at least it does give you a breakdown of parts. So that's really cool. Uh, very, very, very rarely do you get information like that. The rest of it I care less about. So yeah, just a cardboard box. You know what? I don't really care. That's pretty spare packaging, but probably great for the environment that ain't wrapped in plastic, right? So one of the cool things about the Vega is it has this little, um, you know, this is your protective cap for your needle and it is reversible on this so that you can put it on here and it screws on just like that so that you always got it. It doesn't get lost. Like, All right, so I go ahead and remove that and leave it off because that's what I'm used to. And if you compare that to an Iwata Eclipse and you realize how similar that tip is now. Okay, on numerous occasions, I have heard Ken from Badger say that this is the airbrush that's closest to this airbrush, which is the Iwata Eclipse that they have in their lineup. Um, and in some ways, I guess that's true, but they're not the same at all. From a size comparison, they're pretty similar. From a tip to trigger, this is shorter, which actually makes an airbrush a little bit faster in the swing of a lever thing, but I doubt most people rec notice that. I can tell a difference. So apart from size, they're really just not that similar the way they behave and they operate are a little bit different. Other than the fact they're both self-centering nozzles and that's, a, you know, not an uncommon trait and kind of the, the outside design, they're really not the same. I'm gonna start by just assembling the nozzle real quick, show you guys, all you're probably familiar with that sight and you'll want to use that wrench. Speaking of this wrench, the fact that it's closed like that makes it easier to work with, and I can't believe that somebody else hadn't done this in the past. All right, to pull that apart, you, this all comes out, and this is pretty, pretty basic stuff. And of course, there's your needle. And unlike most other Badger airbrushes, and of course, I got some junk down there. I've gotten it dirty already. Most of other Badgers, this one, it actually stays attached. And of course, unlike Awadas, they do not drop into, so they just merely sit on. They have a little piece, little spot on all of your badgers for the air valve that, that attaches on top of your air valve. And that's as far as I'm going to take it apart. Important to note, this adapter right here did not come with the airbrush in this particular case. So it's important that you pick one of those up if you buy one of these unless you've got a Badger air hose because that's pretty much what everybody else is gonna have except for Pache and Badger. Everybody else uses that connection on their air hose. If you notice how much junk's coming out of this airbrush when uh, I'm taking it apart, because other than taking it apart when I first got it, this is the first time I have cleaned it and I've had it for over a week and I run my airbrushes pretty hard. So, and this has had all sorts of thick paints in it. So this would be much more comparable with the 0.5 Iwata Eclipse, which is usually found in the bottle feed version rather than the gravity feed, instead of being like the HP CS or the HP BS, which is a 0.3 needle and nozzle combination. This I have confirmed with Badger is the same nozzle and needle 
as the finest one for the Vega. So if you were interested in the Vega, the Vega has three size tips which go much bigger than this one. But this is able to handle a lot of really thick paints. Like you're gonna see, I was able to take Wicked paint, put it straight in the bottle, and able to go in here and put, you know, thick lines in, and you can get really broad coverage really easily. Or you can start bringing the pressure down, reduce it down a little bit, and you can do some fairly fine lines as well with this brush. Um, and if you spend some time with it, you can get very fine. One thing I will point out, it does take a considerable amount of trigger control because of the way the taper of the needle is. So when you first pull back, it's going to be very, very minuscule adjustments. And if you're not used to how, say, the Badger Patriot and the Badger Anthem work, whereas it starts out fine and then very quickly tapers up to a very wide spray, then you'll have a little bit of a hard time with it. Um, but it is something that you can overcome and you get used to, and it took me a little bit of, of time and practice under the table to get that. But what wound up happening is I wound up loving that because I can go do those thin to thicks or I can get in there and work at the regular normal size detail. Is this a detail brush? Well, Badger lists this as a detail brush. It isn't by no stretch of the imagination a detail, detail brush, but I can get pretty good with it. And the best thing about it is I can continue to put just about any paint from heavy thick paints to, to even like Createx, regular Createx will go through this brush no problem turn the pressure up or you can crank it down turn the pressure down and run things thin like the illustration paints gold and high flows and then start to reduce your paint All right so i may have been guilty of mentioning a few times the fit and finish on badger is usually a little bit less than you know some of the japanese airbrushes but i do want to point out something to you guys i'm going to show you a couple clips and show you the inside of the cup of this badger and then i'm going to show you the clip of uh actually my gsi creos and all of my wadas and all of my creos airbrushes have turned to that brass it gets removed that chrome plating within a couple of days um always and you know i tend to usually we tell everybody well it really doesn't matter um, but I will say that it actually, when it comes to cleaning, it does. I literally am just cleaning this out by spraying a spray bottle in it. And since the passages are so big, it's cleaning out very quickly and easily. I'm just spraying water through it and then maybe hitting a little bit of thinner and a little dab with a, with a brush. And, and it's done. It's clean, which is very refreshing because believe it or not the brass does stick paint more and it does become a little bit harder to clean so great job with that one badger uh maybe you should talk to some of these other companies explain to them how to actually get a finish to stay inside the bowl of the cup because i do have some badgers that are very old that still have the finish inside them all you fanboys that are mad at me for pointing that out you go ahead and leave me a comment down below the rest of you go ahead and leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about this video i'm not done yet got a couple more things to show you so got some cosmic sparkle here Stuff's pretty thick, right? So check it out on the paper right here. See how that, see how thick that paint is? Watch, I'm gonna drop this straight in the airbrush. All right, so I don't have a model that I'm painting on right now, so I just thought I'd show this out. You guys know how hard it is to get pearls to play with your airbrush. And so I'm just gonna lay this on my desk and watch. All right, guys, so I was talking about that brush. So what I do when I clean them out, but anyway, I wanted to show you how easy it was to get that paint out of there. And then I'll blow through it a couple different shots and literally, and it's literally that easy to clean out because, you know, the finish is still good in there and the passageways are so open, I can literally go and get thin paints, put it in this brush, and run it now. In most brushes I have, if I'd run them pearls in there, it would require me to disassemble it and clean it before I would be able to use it again. All right, guys, so I'm gonna drop you a link down for this airbrush down below. Remember, you also would need to get the adapter for the airbrush if you happen to get one of these. And I will also leave you a link to my Amazon shop that lists all nine of the airbrushes that I found under $100.
and some of them are really cool and I can get you more information on those. My goal is to get most of those, not all of them. I'm gonna, my goal is gonna be to get a couple of the other airbrushes on there. I'm not gonna cover the Patriot. I'm not gonna cover a couple other ones. Um, I will be honest, I prefer this brush over the Badger Patriot by a long shot and for multiple reasons. But anyway, guys, if you liked the video, hit the subscribe button. I've always got new stuff coming out. And leave me a comment down below. Leave me a comment down below no matter what. Those comments help the channel grow. And, uh, you know, and of course, if you shop the links, you know how that works. So, uh, yeah, guys, we appreciate you coming by here. I am Bill Kennedy with W. Leon Artistry. My name is Bill Kennedy. William Leon's my real name, hence W. Leon. Everybody else calls me Bill. Anyway, guys, we appreciate you. Once again, we will talk to you next time. Have a good one.